here with Patrick Rice of The Overnight, which just premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. How do you feel right now? I, I my whole body's tingling, not just from <laughs> lack of sleep, but this is this is crazy. It's been a crazy experience. Now, the Overnight has some semblances from your first film, Creep. There's something that I think I read you write. It's kind of becoming your shtick. You can disagree with this. Uncomfortable humor. For sure. Uh, yeah. Can you talk to us about uncomfortable humor? How does one achieve uncomfortable humor on screen? Like beyond just the script being uncomfortable. I, I mean, for me, it's just writing what I think is funny. And then for some that end, ends up inevitably being uncomfortable to other people. My, my wife's first reaction when she read the script was just like, oh my God, you're not going to make this movie, are you? <laughs> And I was like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, that's just my personal taste, I guess, you know. And that was kind of a something that maybe came from trying to write something that felt, trying to write something that was like, you know, incorporating absurd kind of comedic elements while trying to, like, stay real at the same time, you know, in, in, in tone. Yeah, and like the way the film looks and feels going through this uncomfortable evening without giving too much of the plot yeah. away um, has this sort of like loose feeling. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about how you decided to shoot it and how that fit in to yeah. creating this uncomfortable humor? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, that was intentional. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, part of the impetus or part, you know, part of what like my, you know, my instinct going into it was I wanted to make something that sort of like a, a film that sort of had these like broad comedic characters that normally exist in you know like bigger budget broad comedies and throw them into a world that sort of felt more felt more real so in doing so I knew I wanted to shoot the film handheld uh, me and my uh, DP John Gulasarian uh, who shot like like crazy and about time he's kind of a master of like things coming in and out of focus and you know using handheld cameras and uh, we also only wanted to use practical lighting for the most part, as much as possible, only use practical lighting or as little lighting as possible. Because, I mean, with the technology nowadays, it's really easy to, to get a, a beautiful, I don't know if it's easy, but there's the opportunity to get a beautiful image, uh, you know, uh, using the, the, the bare essentials tools wise. Um, what would you say were like the main bare essentials you used on set? Um, well, we on? shot on we shot on Canon C500s. We had two Canon C500s, um, which was exciting. I mean, it's the first thing that I've ever made incorporating two cameras, and I was just like <laughs> a kid in a candy store, you know. And going, in, you know, we wanted to, you know, we wanted each shot to have intention behind it. And so, but even though there was this B camera, we wanted this B camera to essentially feel like another A camera. You know, we didn't want to feel like we were being lazy in terms of our shot decisions and you know we wanted the film to feel loose but we also wanted to kind of create these you know there's they're composed shots that, that feel loose at the same time so we had that and then maybe like a couple china balls that was like <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. how does that work as a director if you're shooting simultaneously two cameras and trying to make sure that yeah it's well it started off i mean i'm used to you know uh, in the past, I've, I've had, when I have had the benefit of having a monitor on me, I've usually just had it right there with the actors and kind of was trying to be as close as possible, not be behind larger monitors. <laughs> but that didn't, I tried that the first day and that just didn't work with this. You know, you want to be there to see everything big and bright and HD. And so I, you know, we had monitors set up that were fairly mobile so that I could kind of go back and forth and look, look, look. I had also my producer, Naomi Scott, with me the entire time sitting there. So if there was something I'd miss, she'd catch it or vice versa. You know, you have some really talented actors in the film and like, you know, they do such a good job oh, uh, working with the whole tone of it. Did you write the script with like, say, Jason Schwartzman in mind? No, I mean, that, that, no, that's huh. like a, that's like waking up from a crazy dream and being <laughs> like, oh my God, you're here, you're in my movie, you know, and he's such a, just giving wonderful, uh, sincere, sensitive human being. And so just like, just having his presence on set alone, like I would have him just as like my guru if I could, you know, just like my positivity guru. But his skills as an actor are just like, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. It's like watching these guys dance with each other was, was wonderful, you know. Um, I mean, literally cat, dance with each little, other. Literally dance, yeah, yeah, right. There are some, see the film. yeah, for sure. Understand why. Yeah. 
But um, no, I mean, we got these guys because, you know, Mark Dupas was attached as a producer early on. We made our film Creep together and was wanting to kind of make some, make another film together. And, um, you know, we, you know, Naomi and Mark came on. It was, oh, no, sorry, Naomi and Adam came on. And that was nice because, like, he was, you know, like, we had this kind of power couple essentially you know and they were wanting to start their own start their own company and uh, um, it seemed like the perfect fit as like a first first feature in terms of dipping their toes into making an independent movie what would be your advice for other filmmakers like starting out wanting to tell interesting stories and you know I would say uh, you know look at the tools that are available to you in terms of like you know friends who can act how much money you have that makes sense that you would want to spend on a project uh, and sort of maybe maybe look at that and say okay I can make a film that's that's this big and then you know, maybe, I don't know, this is like a crazy way of reverse engineering things, but maybe like take a step back and say like, what's an, what, what's an interesting story that could be told within these constraints? Like what's a, like how far can I, how far can I take this? You know, I've been very lucky because, you know, my first experience was kind of like being thrown into the, thrown into the pit. Like I was acting in my first movie and I'd never really acted before, you know? Wow, and so I had to really? kind of like learn, learn as learn as we went along, and make this odd odd movie that was just like me and Mark and a video camera. So like I learned a lot in terms of informing the overnight making that movie, in terms of what what makes sense and what doesn't, what feels real and not like dialogue wise, and in terms of like there's a lot of you know ten you know the the, the give and release of, of tension, you know, in terms of story and trying to keep the audience. You know, with the movie. Yeah, interesting. Yeah.